Today, let's talk about the new Java preview feature in Java 21 called String Templates. Let's see what it's all about. As part of software development, Java developers regularly construct strings by combining various objects and expressions. We know that. So here are some ways that Java provides for string construction. We see the string concatenation method, the format method, we can use formatted method, or we can use the message format method. But none of these methods are actually satisfactory. I mean, they are not very elegant. They are difficult to read, and in many cases are verbose. Here's where string interpolation comes into the picture. Many of the current programming languages like Groovy or JavaScript offer a technique called string interpolation, which can be quite expressive. With this technique, the variables or expressions are embedded inside the string itself, and this improves the expressiveness. At runtime, the variables and expressions are evaluated and replaced with their stringified values. Here are a few examples. These are examples of string interpolation using Groovy and JavaScript. Note that the variables are embedded inside the string itself, and the result is much, much more readable. In Java 21, Oracle introduced a preview feature called String Templates, which brings the same interpolation to Java, but it's also much more. String templates can be considered as a superior form of string interpolation, and we will come to that. Here's a simple example of string interpolation in Java. The expression on the right side of the equal sign is called the template expression. Now, this syntax does look strange, but there is more to this than meets the eye. We will soon come to that. That's actually the string template. The template expression would be str dot the entire string. Now we can also use template expressions with multi-line strings. You can see that the syntax looks similar to the Java text blocks where you have three quotes beginning and three quotes ending and it spans multiple lines. Multi-line strings can be useful in expressing JSON blocks or XML blocks or SQL statements. Here's the example which shows a JSON block using the string template. Now, what we just covered is the basics of string template. And in most cases, we as developers can get by with this knowledge. However, let's dig a bit deeper. Let's look at the syntax again. The syntax of the template expression is composed of three parts. The str, which is basically an inbuilt template processor, and we'll, later on we can see that we can actually create our own template processor. And that implements an interface called string template.processor. And its job is directly to convert the string template to the final output. This final output could be string or it could be any object. The dot has a special meaning out here because this doesn't look like a Java syntax. Dot over here means that make a call to the process method in the template processor and give it an input of the string template. And whatever comes as output is the value of your expression. That's what this means. And on the right side of the dot is the string template. The string template is the string containing the variables and expressions. The class which represents the string template is called the string template class. Well, if you look at the string template itself, there are static blocks out there, and then there is dynamic parts. The static parts are called as fragments, and the dynamic parts is filled with values. Overall, we can think about this as a string template being evaluated at runtime by a template processor, and the result of it is assigned to the string line. That's how the compiler interprets it. Now, which template processor are available in Java as of now? There are several inbuilt template processors available. One we have already seen, which is str. That's an inbuilt template processor that can be used to evaluate the string template. We have seen what str does. It simply does string interpolation. Apart from str, there are two other template processors available. FMT and raw. Now this is 
basically showing the template expression, which is divided into three parts, the template processor, the dot, and the template itself. Now coming to FMT, FMT performs string interpolation, but it also interprets format specifiers which appear to the left of embedded expressions. The format specifiers are the same as those defined in java.util.formatter. And you can see on the screen, there are several format specifiers like percentage dash 14s, which is formatting the name. So that gives a report which is pretty nicely formatted. Now both of these template processes, str and fmt, finally outputs a string. But the template processor design allows us to return something other than the string. It can be any object. Let's take an example of that. There's another inbuilt template processor called raw. What raw does is that it returns simply the string template object. Using the string template object, we can extract the fragments and the values out of it and maybe act on it. But notice that the expression actually returns not a string, but a string template object. Now, all that is great, but the question now is, can we as developers create our own template processor? Now, that would be interesting. And the answer is yes. For that, our template processor must implement an interface called string template dot processor. Now, when you look at the screen, the string template processor simply has one method, which is the process method, which takes in the string template object and returns a type R, which is something that you supply when you create the processor. Now let's go ahead and look at this dot interpretation. We talked about this dot interpretation. Nowhere in Java do we have the special syntax. When a dot is used for the special syntax of template processor, it simply means that the process method is called on the template processor. And the resulting output is the value of the template expression. And you can see how the compiler interprets the line above. It's just simply, it's just creating the string template out of the templated string and then passing it to the process method to get the final output. That's how it interprets the first line. But the most important point about the process method is that it can make sure that the interpolation is done in a safe way, avoiding any kinds of injection attacks, as well as customizing it and using it in clever ways. Let's take some examples of that. Here's an example of a template processor which returns a JSON object from the string, and so the developers don't have to go through that extra step of conversion. You can see it implements the processor but it implements the process in such a way that it interpolates it, and then it actually creates a JSON object and returns it. So because the process method returns a JSON object, template expression would be a JSON object. So if you look at the code which is actually using this processor, it is JST dot the entire templated string, the output is the JSON object. One of the most important goals of string templates is that composing the Java string should be secure. That's the reason why simply string interpolation idea was not satisfactory to the Java engineers. By using a processor in the middle, developers now have the option to validate the values and the expressions that are passed to the template just for sanity and security. Here's an example of the screen, which is a SQL template processor, which uh, also implements the processor interface but if you see the implementation of the process, it takes the string template, takes the fragments, takes the values, and we need to sanitize the value to make sure things are fine. So it passes through a method called sanitize and returns a similar list, but with sanitized values. That way you cannot do any kind of SQL injection attacks on the SQL. One more thing which is worth noting is that you can also use a functional style to create a template processor. For example, on the screen, you can see that you pass a lambda and the lambda itself takes in a string template and returns a JSON object. You can simply use it in this way where string template.processor.off and then pass in the lambda. That outputs a processor 
and then we can just simply use the processor below. All this should give you a good idea of where the Java string templates functionality is going. And it should give you a good idea about template expressions in general. Feel free to comment and like this video. In summary, string templates provide us with several key benefits. First of all, making it easy to express strings that include values computed at runtime. Secondly, it enables the creation of non-string objects as part of the output of the template processor. And thirdly, it also improves the security of the Java programs when composing strings where user-provided values are being used.